<laughs> True. Good point. Good point. Let me move my shit around here. Uh... Don't want to cut off Remy there. Good morning, guys. I didn't want to interrupt you. Right? I'm fucking a mess this morning. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's Ben. All right, let's let Ben in. Hey, Ben. He has his audio through whereby. He can't hear us right now. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay, no worries, no worries. <laughs> How you doing? How's your morning going? Uh, it's a slow morning. <laughs> you should meet yourself on. You should meet yourself on Webby. Oh no! Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. No worries. Okay. <laughs> hey, potato bug. Guess who has? Guess who has cyberpunk? Potato bug. <laughs> Do you have a big black cock too? I, I I'm thinking. Of it. <laughs> 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 mention it. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's that's a strange thing to be able to edit. I'm not sure why that's a that's a thing. No, but this is this is this it's is the future. Me, okay? It's the future. This is day gaming, editing your genitals, it is perfect and beautiful. It's it's the future <laughs> of of genitalia. It really is. We're yes. gonna have designer vaginas and penises someday. Yes. <laughs> yes. I guess so. I Sex guess so. talks incoming. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. That's uh. too funny. Yeah, so I thought I'd uh, I'd get everyone together to talk about the student debt forgiveness, but like I said earlier, it was Monty's idea, Dia, a Montreal player. I'm not sure if any of you guys are familiar other than Remy because I've had him on before with Rem. Um, it's his idea. He's the economics guy. He he knows a lot more than I do, but I, I looked into it a little bit, and I was like, holy shit, I know absolutely nothing. And as good as this sounds, like, maybe I'm wrong about everything I think. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, wait, did I get an F? Did, did I F? No? Did uh, I F? It is no. so like him to be like, hey, let's do this, and then be like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Him and his damn ADHD. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, no, that's that's definitely uh, it's definitely an issue. You got that? Okay, so it's just half gel. So it looks like I'm still alive. There's no issue on anyone else's end. I think we're good. I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, might be me if no one else did. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't hear from uh, Johnny, but you know what? We might just start without them. <laughs> Ooh. Um, oh. and then, you know, if they, uh, if they join late, uh, you know, I told them feel free. So I'll get the show on the road. Did I tweet my tweet? So, uh, what I'll do is I'll go around and get everyone to introduce themselves. I'll start with Tina, if you don't mind. Yes, hello. I am Tina underscore two. Uh, I cover mostly American politics, but I'm also Canadian, so I do cover uh, some Canadian politics because it's... Oh, you know, Tina, I lost you there. Is my internet being screwy right now? Uh, I, I, got a, I got your row, buddy, for like two seconds, but you're back are we, now. Did that are we good now? Else? Good for me. Um, Sorry about that. Right. I uh, I'm I cover Canadian politics and American politics and from time to time I'll cover uh things outside of, of you know, North America, like the Indian protests, uh other the worker protests in India, all that jazz. And also, you know, Twitch left mommy. You know, if you want a spanking, come over. Wait, wait, what? I I, I, I... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, now uh, 
Remy, why Remy? don't you introduce yourself? <laughs> you want a spank and Remy? Yes, well, you, oh, oh, I'm always down for spanks. Oh. <laughs> I am Remy. Um, I, uh, I, I'm a Twitch streamer and podcaster. I play World of Warcraft and talk about sex. Um, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm a quote-unquote sex expert. Um, I have my bachelor's in education. Um, and yeah, I, uh, I, that's really all I do. I, I come on Tara's panel to be completely, uh, misplaced and, uh, just kind of sitting here. <laughs> I I know a little bit about politics. I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a baby. I'm a baby, and I need a mommy. Oh no! <laughs> oh, listen, I got you covered. I got you covered, man. Come yeah, on. Yeah, that, that's me. That's my thing. <laughs> Alrighty, that's too funny. Um, and last but not least, Mr. Bleep Blomp Ben, please introduce yourself. Yeah, so I, I'm Ben. Um, I, I cover news and politics. Um, I kind of have an interesting background. Um, I usually cover, like, and, you know, everything kind of ranging from science to, like, uh, like political theory to, like, um, other random stuff while I, while I go over the news. Um, you know, I... Um, <laughs> I don't know, my undergraduate degree was in social sciences and my master's degree was in biotechnology, right? So I'm kind of all over the map in terms of like uh, having a background on things. And so it, it leads to some pretty fun conversations, I think, ultimately. So yeah, and I stream every day at like nine o'clock central time, uh, seven days a week. Right on. Thank you, guys. So, yeah, if anyone hasn't already, go follow all of these lovely people. I, I watch them myself when I'm not streaming. I'm lurking in, in one of their chats or I'm chatting or one or another. Um, I, wanted, I wanted you guys together to chat today about student loan debt forgiveness. Um, I did my bachelor's and I did a certificate in criminology. So that was about... Um, six years of schooling, so I got a nice, nice big old pile of debt myself. Um, what about you guys? Are you guys in the same boat, or did you guys have a, a little no. bit? Of debt? No, no, you, you have no debt. No, really, you're no. lucky. I'm, oh my I'm, god. Well, I mean, I'm in Canada. It's not that intense here, but I, I see how it affects uh, my friends. And I, I had a partner who was American for five years, so and it affected me personally. So, well. Yeah. Mm. I, I don't know. The military kind of paid for a decent chunk of mine, but I sent, ended up still walking away with a, a decent chunk of debt as well, just because, um, like, uh, I mean, it's a lot of schooling, right? It's a lot of schooling. I've, I've been in college for, like, six years. It's, um, it's a so. career, essentially. You're, you're a, a student that's it's like a job. Right? Yeah, except for you pay them. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, exactly. Unless you're lucky enough to be one of the few people who do graduate programs where they actually pay you to do that. Unfortunately, I, I'm not one of those people. Um, yeah. <laughs> <be> great. <laughs> I, have, I have to go. In New York, you you can only teach with your bachelor's for five years, and then you have to get your master's. So I, I don't teach anymore because I, I just can't do it. <laughs> like, I, I, it, I don't have, I'm like 20 grand in debt. I, I don't want to be in debt anymore to get my fucking master's. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. It, it feels a, a lot like our economy is going in a way that we we are encouraged to take on this debt that we'll never be able to pay back. <laughs> what do you guys think about that? Do you guys feel like student loans are inherently predatory? Absolutely. 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 It, de it depends on where you go to to school because like a lot of schools locally, like local colleges, community colleges are starting to do tuition free stuff. So it really depends on where you go. If you want to go to a university, if you want to go to a state college, you might be paying more and you might end up having predatory loan issues. Yeah, I honestly think like so, so I'm going to I'm going to go out and, on a, and let's make it seem conspiratorial, but like hear me out in, in 
it's like a class test, right? It is like a class test. It is, are you rich enough to go to college, right? And then get an unpaid internship and be able to survive on that. If you can pass those barriers, if you're rich enough to, to go through college and still be able to do unpaid internships, then you're golden and you're gonna have good money for the rest of your life after you're done with all that shit. And your you know, nepotism is gonna carry you the rest of the way. But like, um, if you come out with a bunch of debt, then you're like a convenient tool for for like the system at large to just have somebody who is so constantly in debt that you're always going to be desperate for work and will be willing to take like any shit wages that uh, people are willing to throw your way um and so that it's a hundred percent predatory well yeah. i mean post uh, post-secondary education in my opinion is is predatory in itself so of course anything connected to it it, it's going to be inherently predatory as well, and that, that's that's that that includes paying all, for all of that education. Absolutely. <laughs> and then we look at the the price of tuition has just gone up exponentially in the last few years, even surpassing the the um, the inflation. So it's it's not equal. So we're just paying more and more and more for the same education that's not worth anymore than it was a few yeah. years ago. I would actually argue to say that in some weird ways, it's kind of worth less because what yeah. has happened yeah. internally in universities, what's happened internally in universities is they've been actively expanding their, their sort of team of administrative staff while they've also been categorically underfunding the actual like educational, um, you know, professionals that work there, right? So you'll, you'll find like all your professors for the most part will be like adjuncts, right? Um, who are get, getting paid like nothing for wages. And then you'll have these administrators that are, you know, pulling out six figures, um, you know, running around just like, uh, like managing random campus bureaucracy. And so like the bureaucracy is like expanding, um, but like the actual teaching staff, the actual faculty, right, that, that, theoretically makes the school a better place. They make the school a better place. They liter literally make it an institution of learning. They are getting underpaid um, and they're getting sidelined in the management of, of schools right now. And that's unfortunately what's leading to like some of the increases is we're actually paying more money for worse services because of this extreme expansion of administrative staff. We, you know, in tuition, you have to pay for their salaries. Um, and so it like double, doubles the number of people that are being paid by the school. And then these administrators, they're like, hmm, people are complaining about these high tuitions. Golly gee, I think what we should do is cut teacher's salaries, no. right? And the professor's salaries. It, it couldn't possibly be us that's the problem, right? Because oh, we're oh the administrators. So without us, what, 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 what would people do? Um, do and uh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> being a teacher in yeah. here, let's cut teacher salary. Oh my god, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you, like it sucks. Like teachers are incredibly underpaid across the board, no matter where you fucking teach, on what level you fucking teach. And I, I had no fucking idea that they're paying school administration more than they're paying their fucking teachers. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that system works in college but being a teacher for a couple of years myself like even if it, like I, I was just a kindergarten teacher you know I but I still like barely made enough like tw like 27,000 a year is not enough <laughs> like oh, no. <laughs> no no and uh, that's not enough to pay off my goddamn loans to get this education so I can be a good teacher, so I can teach the future generations. Like, And then, like, it the demotivates teachers a lot of the time if they're not paid enough. And then you get a subpar education. Exactly. Exactly. And even, like, professors that do probably make a lot more. I don't know what the difference is between the, the income of a professor versus, like, a high school teacher, but I imagine it is a lot more in, in post-secondary education. Um, it actually depends, to be honest. Right. Really? So, like, for, for example, here in Minnesota, um, I think our public school teachers are, are start at, at about $40,000 a year because we have one of the best education systems in the U.S., sort of. It's kind of falling apart right now because they're trying to underfund it, but um, like they start at like 40 ish thousand dollars a year. Um, and most of the professors though, at like the, the state colleges, they'll say, oh, we want you to be an adjunct for a while, which by the way, the adjunct professors don't get put on tenure tracks, right? They don't get put on tenure tracks. 
And so if they're making like if they're making wages as, as an adjunct, they're getting paid per class. And so they can end up walking away with maybe making like twenty or thirty thousand dollars a year or something like that. They're paid um, per class. Uh, yeah, well, it, de it depends on like obviously the university, but yeah, there's a lot of adjunct pro professors that are literally just paid per class. They're not given a guaranteed salary. They're not given a. It sounds like a, a substitute teacher, right? Yeah, yeah they're yeah. basically permanent substitute teachers. Basically, that's awful. Is the situation that they get put on. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. It is pretty pretty awful. And then, um, and then there's a whole question about you know like whether or not the the union is like you know, bargaining with them for adjuncts enough for whether or not it's just focusing on full-time faculty, which is like a, a huge issue that exists uh, in retail unions, to be honest, too. Because I was like, when I was in retail, I was under the UFCW and like the union was mostly there for the full-time staff, which on some, like on some level makes sense, but on another level um, is a little frustrating. Um, but uh, but ultimately I, I could see that and I've heard things about that playing out at the uh, at, at the like uh, university level too, um, where you have uh, basically adjunct professors that don't get as much attention from the union, um, and they definitely don't get uh, the wages that like uh, faculty do. I need an all teachers lives matter button. <laughs> <laughs> Just get a shirt. Yeah, wow. I love it. I love it. Yeah, beautiful. That's that's. I've never heard that, and that is entirely fucked up. Oh my god! Mm -hmm. uh, like, how do you expect to encourage people to get an education and to want to go through education and even be not even a teacher, but anything at all, if you're going to overcharge them, give them an inadequate education, and you're treating your teachers so poorly that they don't want to give an education, at least not a good <clears> one. <throat> and the good teachers that that completely ignore how shitty they're paid and still do their job amazingly are like heroes but it, it seems like a problem that literally crumbles everything like who wants to get a fucking education now nobody it, it, i think i think a lot of it is like a trap so even the most basic job i've noticed like uh to, to get a to get a job as a manager at a fast food restaurant you have to have a business degree and what? And, and to get a business degree you have to, you know, pay all this exorbitant amount of money. It, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's it, it's it's an intentional trap uh, that they that they put in. You have to have an education, even though it's worthless, because every place almost expects you to have experience and 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 post secondary education. What? So it you yeah. have no other option almost because it's built into every single system that you have to have. Uh, you have to have a degree of some sort. Um, well, and a lot of that is like psychological warfare against like yeah. working class people, right? Because mm -hmm. I mean, think about it, right? So if you're if you're a business owner, if you're one, you're a business owner, and you want to get away with paying people shit wages, one of the things that you can do is you can be like, oh, we're going to require a degree, and we're going to require an impossible amount of years of experience. So when this person inevitably shows up for this job making like a minimum wage, you can undercut them. Um, like yeah exactly you can you can basically say well we required all these things and you clearly don't have it so we're gonna pay you a little bit less and uh it, it's just it's just a trick it's just a trick to basically say like you should feel lucky to even have this job and mm -hmm. it, it like that mentality that mentality is very very reminiscent um of like it's basically like feudalism right it's like you're lucky to be under this feudal lord that is protecting you we're from the, like, the horrors of the world um and so like most americans today have been basically thrust into like debt peonage to be honest i and it's ugh. i i mean i know what you're talking about i've definitely looked at receptionist jobs that want me to have like a two-year degree in some bullshit of humanities i'm like what the fuck is a humanity <laughs> like <laughs> like i'm sorry I don't know why anyone wanted to get a degree in humanities, but I don't even know what that is. Like, what, what, how do you have to, do you teach someone to be human or like, cause I mean, that's a class somebody should take probably, but <laughs> <laughs> True. it is, it is an absolute war against like working class people and the poor people of the world. It is. And I like, I'm, <sighs> 
I can't. I don't. I know. think it's like a liberal arts degree, kind of like. Oh. Maybe like I think it's like uh like gender studies and stuff. I, I got gotcha. mistaken. I got gotcha. you. So mistaken. it'd be like a liberal arts degree. Gotcha. I mean, and yeah. those are useful for some things, and it's good for an overall general education as far as like secondary education goes, but. Uh, you're not going to get too far with a liberal arts degree these days. Unfortunately, yeah. 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 Even though yeah. you should, even though you yeah, should. No, it's it, important to, to get these kinds of, these I, kind of I feel you like know. having just like a liberal arts degree qualifies you to be a manager anywhere. Yes, and you shouldn't have to get a business degree to, to be a manager. No. Like, it's, it's a little two-year I, degree. I have a little education. I'm not a dum-dum. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, well, that's actually a pattern that's really observed, like, like throughout the United States right now is basically the more useful for society, whatever your job is or whatever your education is in, um, the less you get paid. Right. So if you look at like a business degree, hedge fund manager, like literally do nothing but get themselves rich. Right. By making like taking like fees and, and doing all those things. Right. They're they're. If there were no hedge funds tomorrow, everything would continue to go as it is, right? But they get paid literally millions of dollars. Then you look at like school teachers, right? You're talking, you were a kindergarten teacher. Mm -hmm. If there were no kindergartens in America, right? If all of a sudden all the kindergarten garden teachers disappears, like every parent in America would have a panic attack immediately. <laughs> It'd be like, like, well, just, like. Just, just... <laughs> Just take a look at what they deemed essential during this pandemic, and exactly, and and, yeah. and compare that to to the wages that those people got. Like, it's it's insane. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. uh, um, I'm a firm believer that pencil pusher and paper pusher jobs should be the ones that should be automated, not McDonald's. And oh, you you you're talking about bullshit jobs. You're talking yeah. about bullshit jobs. Bullshit now. jobs. Yeah. Uh, bullshit <laughs> jobs are the ones that should be automated and get rid of. If you got a fucking uh -huh little cushy job where you're sitting at a desk and you're literally pushing your pencil around all day like get out of here go do something mm -hmm. else go do something more productive and useful for society than sitting at that goddamn desk says the person mm -hmm. streaming uh <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean this is my bullshit job now but um <laughs> I mean, I, I, i'd say i'd say we as streamers are more productive than 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 pencil pusher you know what i mean oh 100 percent. like because at least we provide entertainment and information right we theoretically are making people's lives better yes. by both informing them and maybe hopefully helping them escape the reality for a little bit that is we, like the whole, whole yeah, right and it's a quality say, of life would you say we create value oh, 100%, 100%. <laughs> this is just pure value creation right here um, you know and like hedge fund managers i i uh you know, like I, I had to take the other day when, when some right winger was like crying about something. I was like, you know what? Literally me, me playing one song on the guitar alone in a room by myself, it pro produces more value for society than every hedge fund manager combined, mm -hmm. because at least I'm getting joy out of it. Nothing a hedge fund manager has ever done has brought joy to literally anybody, maybe, much less themselves. Yeah, you know? yeah. Maybe their family, but that's about it, because money. And at a yeah. certain threshold, money stops giving you happiness, but it uh, definitely has been proven that you do can gain happiness from money. Yeah. I mean, you, you can gain comfort from, from money, mm -hmm. for sure. It, it can, which which leads to a you know level of happiness yeah a quality of life that makes it mm -hmm. easier um which i mean quality of life issues are <clears throat> everywhere from yeah employment to for some people to... money could literally buy happiness for most people uh yeah, yeah uh, an extra 200 dollars a month for me i wouldn't have to worry about do i have do i pay my heating bill this month or do i pay my car payment <laughs> like you know mm -hmm. uh it, I, uh, I'm i fortunate enough to get paid to stay home and teach my son because he's disabled, or at least through the pandemic. And there, that's something my state's doing, which I'm fortunate enough to have. And there's so many people that don't have that safety net that are home now with their kids, teaching them and probably pulling their hair out. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, I mean, I, I guess that that goes to speak to like I know we're we're sort of like like going way out from like college education now and stuff, but um, like um, 
unpaid labor is a huge thing in our society and it predominantly is is thrust upon women largely right like if you look at right so like like how much value do mothers produce right for society as a whole right literally like if there weren't people doing parenting work nobody would literally be around <clears throat> at all right like we all at some point um you know we we all at some point you know rely on e either a parent or a guardian of some sort um just by the nature of being humans right we are babies at some point and so society literally literally couldn't move forward and yet uh we expect all of that labor to go unpaid and we also disproportionately put all that labor on women um and uh it's it's just like i i think a even further testament to like the the value right the value of the work that people do um being sort of inversely correlated with how much pay they're getting right uh, people will basically say oh it should be rewarding enough to be a parent why why would why would somebody why would somebody pay you to do that why would somebody pay you to do that yeah and it's like well because hold up if there were no parents okay then believe it or not there would be nobody to work at mcdonald's okay so your company literally can't exist yeah. if there's no parents it, out there it's it's how if you're gonna have a capitalist society you need a couple of things you need you need workers and you need people to take care of the workers when they until they're able to grow up and be workers and parents are essential um i was actually going to say uh the arts of any kind whether it's music or physical yes, art yes, they are completely yes. undervalued and they definitely don't get paid you ever met a local musician they're eating ramen every night like i think that's a lot of due to the to the to the to the like fetishization of like stem culture like the stem the lord, starving the artist like, yeah no the stem lords the people who do who do like science technology you know oh well, well, stem. Well, yeah will be like oh you know oh you you're getting a, a art degree in in you know history oh lol idiot get something that gets get, you know learn something that can get you a job that kind of but, uh you know but rhetoric. history is incredibly valuable like no, it is it is if it we is. didn't oh. know shit about history we would be doomed to repeat a hell of a lot more um i think i think that's why i think that like a lot of education uh is important and that's why like that's why this is our the way that Western society has built education around getting a job is extremely has been extremely dangerous and extremely toxic to how we empathize with other people in general because it's the whole bootstraps mentality. Yeah, boot ugh. I hate that mentality. Bootstraps. I Please hate that. that bootstraps. I hate that shit. Like I'm sorry. Uh, there are so many people who probably have had it worse than I have, but I grew up poor. I grew up on welfare cheese. Like, I had to do the pick yourself up by your bootstraps method. And guess what? I'm now 20K in debt with a degree I don't use. And, <laughs> like, what has that got me? I did it. I did what you wanted. Now what do I do? I'm in debt. Like, uh, well, you clearly haven't done enough. Right? You know I mean? <laughs> they might have been saying, oh, well, do something more. Get, you know, get, get a side hustle. You know, like, <laughs> literally it, it's 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 crazy i want to be able to stream and podcast and not have to worry about money not not because people are paying me to do it because i have the the job security elsewhere to make this a hobby and not a side hustle mm -hmm. you know um be able to 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 i don't know chase my passion without having to worry about money would be nice yes absolutely and uh, to bring it back around to student loan debt, like it, it definitely affects your quality of life to have these sort of debts hanging over your head. It affects whether you can get a mortgage. It affects like, you know, whether you're Christ whether you're going to pay your car bill next month or not. Whether your power is going to be staying connected, right? Um, and I wonder, have have any of you guys looked into um, like Bernie's or um, Elizabeth Warren's policy on student uh, loan debt forgiveness. I'm I'm looking at you, the great, because I feel like you're you're the, the most reset. well versed in, in the pol political world. Um. Yeah. I mean, so the gist of the plan really is um, the the gist of the plan um, that I've seen. Right. I haven't gone like deep dive into either Bernie or Elizabeth Warren's plan in particular. Uh, but the gist of it is the executive branch. Right. The president technically has the authority or i guess the education department specifically has the authority to negotiate the repayment of these loans right um 
And the reason that is significant is because it means that they could renegotiate literally to zero, right? They could say, okay, yeah, no, you don't need to pay it back. Um, and a lot of people like freak out about that. And they're like, oh my goodness, how could we possibly pay for all that money um, to, to cover those loans? But um, Jeff Bezos? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, but that's the thing. That's the thing. And this is what's really important to remember, right? That money is already spent. That money is already spent, yeah. right? There's not, there's, there's nothing, there's no more money that would ever have to go into it, right? It would just be, I mean, cause think about it. Think about it. If I, if I loan somebody $5, if I loan somebody $5 and they come back to me a week later and they say, Ben, I'm sorry, I just can't pay you back $5. Um, have I do I lose $5 by forgiving that $5? Am I going to have to some, like, who am I going to have to give another $5 to for me to forgive that? What? Right. And the answer is nobody. That $5 is already gone. It's already not in my pocket anymore. Right. So there's no, um, there, there, there's not, not really a loss there in the moment. Right. There's a, it's, it's literally just a lateral move. It only benefits that person to not have that debt over them. Um, and it doesn't actually hurt you to just forgive that $5. So, um, and, I just had oh, a, I just had a question about that. So, what happens when you forgive those things, and when you uh, so someone takes out a loan and they can't pay it, and after ten years you decide to just wipe the debt? Like, what happens to the company that loaned that money, and what happens like if if that happens on a grander scale, would would that affect the economy? Like, I'm that's 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 something I don't know anything about. So. Yeah, yeah. And so so in order to really understand that, you have to like understand how like money creation and debt works in the United States. Um, so for example, in the specific instance of student loan debt, the government literally creates money. It creates money out of thin air, right? And then gives that money to a company for the company to go then and give to you, right? Like literally all these loans, I mean, and even then it's not really even that direct, right? The, the, the federal government directly loans the money to you. And then this middleman company is given the sole right is literally given the sole right under the law to collect on those debts so literally they're just making 100 percent profit they're making 100 percent profit they're literally skimming off the top as money goes in between you and the government that's, also, that's literally the, all they do the middleman uh, the middleman generally uh absorb yeah. them out of interest rates that's also yeah, another so, factor so they're that they tons add of in. money they're making tons of money uh literally for doing nothing they have just artificially turned themselves into middlemen um so in the broader question of would it would it affect the economy the answer is yes it would affect the economy but how would it affect the economy it would it would create a huge boost in the economy because all of this debt would be forgiven there would basically be one company which would be navient which would lose a lot of money uh, but the, the only money they would lose is like future money that they're going to have, right? Which, I mean, I mean, think about it, right? Think about it. If, um, it, I'm trying to think of like a good example, but um, like, so if all, all, all of a sudden tomorrow horse racing was illegal, right? Let's say that there's, there's no more horse races whatsoever, right? It's not like the horse racing, like gambling companies lose their money today. They're, they're not losing. They already made all the money they were going to make. They're just losing money tomorrow, right? They're not going to be able to make that money in the future. And that's not really that's not really a loss of money, is it, right? They're just losing the potential of future money, um, which I think we all can understand to be fundamentally different um, than, than actually losing money out of your own pocket. And so that's really what they're talking about when they're like, oh, no, we're going to lose all this money. Um, the people who think that we need to pay back anything are literally, if, basically, when it comes to student debt forgiveness, if anybody talks about spending any money to pay off those debts, what they're really talking about is literally handing money for free to like bankings, uh, like like banking companies and like finance like companies um, that manage those loans. That's all they're talking about. They, they're literally like, but we have to make sure that they're making these profits. And we all know um, banks really don't need that kind of money. <laughs> yeah, they, they really don't because, you know, when it comes to more consumer loans, banks literally create that money out of thin air too, right? Our, the government has sort of delegated money creation authority to these banks. Um, so the whole situation that operates with the government where you can just forgive debt and all of a sudden, like, everything is still kind of neutral, um, it's the same The same is true with, the, with private banks as well. So I'm sorry for that long-winded explanation, but ultimately, 
No, we'll private that. banks are private banks are very parasitical. I mean, it, it it definitely explains my my question enough. Like that that sounds like basically that if this whole hubbub about if we do wipe out student debt, that like the 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 was it the Great Reset or something, or people are like it's gonna crash the economy. It doesn't sound like it, no. and I mean, I it sounds like common sense that if you wipe out debt people start spending more because they don't have to worry about that debt, which fuels the economy because we all know supply and demand does fuel our economy. So the more like demand there is for something, you know, yeah, that, that makes sense. Hmm. And now I, 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 <laughs> I, I just don't understand why people are so upset about it, I guess. <laughs> Other well, than I think uh, they, they've been, a lot of people have been brainwashed by these systems into thinking that this system is the best system. And if we get rid of the system, It'll be it'll be utter devastation and destruction. Fuck That's where a lot of it comes from. So it, it's it's literally propaganda in, in, that benefits private banks. Yeah. Yeah. And to be fair, companies do get something out of this, right? Companies get out of this. What we were talking about earlier, people are desperate and they will work for shit wages, right? So if all of a sudden mm -hmm. all this all the debt, let's let's pretend it's not just student debts, all the debt in America was canceled out. Well, then all of a sudden, working people might be able to take a month off to find a better job, right? It, all of a sudden, people might want to start their own businesses. All of a sudden, um, you know, people aren't literally forced into, like, if I don't make this payment next month, you know, like, that's not, that, that, that becomes not a calculation in their mind that they have to worry about, um, which means they would be more likely to demand higher wages, right? They'd be more likely to demand benefits at work. And... So now all these companies, right, they wouldn't lose money because they already provide these benefits to people in every other country in the world, right? Uh, to include, like, for example, Afghanistan has, like, literally more paid family leave than the United States does, guaranteed by law. I mean, think about that. I mean, family is right? a so, huge deal in those places in the world, though. You're talking about people that live with multi-general, like, generational homes. So family is much more of an idea than it is in the United States. Yeah, um, but, like... But that's really because, like, the system that we have has, like, stripped people of their ability to have a family, right? Even the idea of, yeah. like, single-family homes is something that they pushed for in, like, the 50s um, it like to, like, sort of expand, like, suburban sprawl. Um, but, uh, like, if everybody's debts were forgiven, they'd be able to demand higher wages. And so these companies wouldn't lose profits, but they would lo lose out on their profit margin a little bit. Um, and... They, they don't want to do that. It's not worth it to them. So they put out a lot of propaganda that basically tells people, oh, no, people have to pay their debts. You know, you, ha you just have to. There's no way around it because um, that's how they make their money. I love to live like a European and just be able to take a month off in the summer. Um, <laughs> uh, but, yeah. So... I feel like our system's a little backwards because if we are going to promote family because family promotes workers and military soldiers and that's what, you know, keeps our fucking system going, then why wouldn't we support said families instead of keeping them under the thumb of fucking, I don't even know what to call it, but like the man. Uh, <laughs> like, how, how, how do we have a system that is so backwards like that and we, no one, no one realizes almost the hypocrisy of you know have a family but you we're not going to pay you enough to support it well i think i think the bootstraps uh mentality has a lot to do with it you know like oh you you have to live on your own by the time you're 18 <laughs> and that's that's like the only way to prove that you're a true adult uh live and suffer under a system where you 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 have to pay to a landlord you go to work for a shitty job to pay for a landlord uh, you know, and all that jazz. Remember when? Absolutely. Do you, do you remember when you were a kid and you're like, man, I can't wait to be 18. It's gonna be glamorous. Ah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> now I'm like 30 something and being like, what the fuck? Why did I move out at 16? Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What the, the worst part is, like, when we're talking about this, I gave up a scholarship to go to a more prestigious university. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. Yeah. That's yeah. another thing that really annoys yeah. me is, yeah. like, this, this idea that, like, 
your uh your local college isn't as good as like mm -hmm. you know harvard or something or juilliard but it, it's yeah. it's it's you probably get the same amount of education it's just oh, costs yeah. way more it, i mean and the thing it depends the on thing... where you live in the states a lot of educational systems are uh failing in a, a the southern and midwestern areas of the world like our country mm -hmm. Uh, they they suffer not only from being underfunded, but teacher staff teaching staff is uh, sometimes undereducated, and you also have people who are uh, against the idea that academia has to be liberal, and they force upon things like uh, creationism. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, we have those things that affect your education. I can understand why some people feel like their local community college doesn't provide them enough because they of where they live. Um, I will say I lived in Ohio for seven years and their community college in comparison to the community college up here, the SUNY colleges, uh, they're lacking. And it's unfortunate because those people deserve a good education just like anyone else. And their local college should be able to provide that. Yeah. I mean, plus there's this whole mythology around like, oh, if you go to these prestigious universities, then you're going to you're going to make a lot of money. You're guaranteed a job or some shit, which is bullshit. You, yeah, because if you break it down, if you break it down and you look at like, OK, who is coming out of Harvard, Stanford, Yale, Princeton? Who is coming out of these universities and making like six figures right when they graduate? And you're like, oh, it's the legacy admissions. Mm -hmm. It's all the legacy yep. admissions that that show up, and they're like, "Yeah, their dad runs like a hedge fund company, or like their dad is like the CEO of some random thing." And it's like, okay, so it's it's not that being a, in a prestigious university, right, makes you a lot of money. It's that people with a lot of money buy their way into these prestigious universities, and then they go and leave to also continue to make a lot of money. It's almost like most wealth is inherited. There's a big scandal with that actress that paid, like a bunch of actresses and stuff that paid for their children to like basically glide through some fucking university. Um, and like, I don't know, I think they paid someone to take their SATs or some shit. Um, you know, and that's, that's fucked up. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, like RIT is a private college where I live. And they... Uh, their big thing is you're guaranteed a job when you exit, which is garbage. Uh, because they're, they think that because you, they, they force you basically to take an internship, a paid internship to graduate. You have to do six months of a job within your field in order to graduate from R RIT. And that's, that internship is supposed to guarantee you a job once you graduate. That's garbage. Well, I think a lot of it is they expect you to network. You ex they expect you to find a job on your own, not, not anything through them, but you know, oh, go in, and that's that's where their you know their their greatness lies. Well, they like these places. Some of them they hold like uh, for for seniors, like uh, what what we would call a career day, where they have people from all over the place. Like I yeah. I've met people because I dated a guy that went to RIT. I met people that work for fucking Google at these places, and some people do get jobs, but. A overwhelming majority of these students that are promised that they're going to have a job when they graduate aren't getting them, and they're yeah. they're moving out of Rochester, they're moving elsewhere in the the country, and like because no one wants to stay here because this I'm going to get a job thing doesn't exist, and they just fucking leave. Well, that that's another thing that I've noticed is like you barely even get a job because like every market or every industry is so saturated with students starving. Mm -hmm. Or a freshly graduate student starving for a job especially so like the it, tech industry and yeah and that's why people just say like people who say like oh you don't worry just just learn like coding or learn tech and you'll get a job fine easy it might have been that way 15 like 10 15 years ago but it's no longer that way be a like, teacher every single be a nurse you're guaranteed a job you might be underpaid but you're guaranteed a goddamn job you know what we need nurses teachers <laughs> like mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, absolutely. It's funny. It's actually the opposite in Canada, though. I know a lot of people that took education went to be a teacher, and there's just more people that have the education and than the teachers need it. Unfortunately. Wow. I yeah. Like, way more teachers. Nice. We have yeah. we have a problem with we don't have enough teachers, uh, 
especially ones that want to work for uh, the, the failing systems that we live around. Uh, Rochester just closed down five public schools because they couldn't afford it. But uh, we got plenty of charter schools here. No, they can afford it. They're just, they're just, they're just they, putting all their money they, to... They closed yeah. down five fucking public schools, but they gave the fucking cops a million dollars in their budget. Yeah. Oh, they can afford it. They can yeah. afford it. They, they yeah. use the excuse of not being able to afford it. Yeah. So, is it a Republican leadership there? Uh, Rochester actually has a Democratic uh, uh, leader and city council, but um, Rot like uh, things that people don't know about New York 101. Majority of New York is actually red. The only places that are blue, like most places, are the city. Mm -hmm. uh, so you got Buffalo, Rochester, and then New York City. And I wouldn't even count Albany because Albany is just garbage. Um, <laughs> and so a lot of people, even outside of Rochester, affecting the legislation, even Cuomo himself, are pretty much right to center leaning people so you know you have well that's that's just the democratic party in general yeah um new york isn't as liberal as people think it is unless you live in new york city and and then mm -hmm. you have people like aoc and you know all that shit um which i i want to i want a rochester version of aoc please we just had our mayor uh indicted for like fraud and like embezzlement and shit. Hey, and American politics, baby. What do you expect? It <laughs> sucks too because she was like one of the. She was a female African American woman in a power of position, like a position of power. Sorry, I have dyslexia. Uh, <laughs> and like for a while, we thought Mayor Lovely was a great person that was doing so much for the community, and then it comes out that like, oh, she covered up a bunch of police like violence and she she stole money from people and it's like oh <laughs> shit mm -hmm. um but yeah i've been i've uh there was a local election we had like four, three like four or five years ago where the same thing happened like this guy was knocking on doors for like like our ward and uh he was he was really progressive like i talked to him i actually had a conversation with him uh like like a year in power turns out he t he he like literally takes money from a private company to build condos and shit right it's it's the same shit like it's it's not just america it, it's all over the board i like i really really wish that politicians <clears throat> weren't paid i feel like you're a civil servant you're doing this for the greater good of your your country you shouldn't be paid um at all <laughs> I don't know, like, on the higher levels of things, like, I don't know, like, I understand paying, like, I don't know, like, like, lower tiers of government, but, like, I don't know, something about, or at least lowering how much they pay, like, senators and shit, because it's... Well, it's, it's not the, it, it's, it's who they take money from is more of the issue than how much money they're getting, okay. and that's why so, they take money, they take money because they're not paid that how, much in how, general. How does that work? How do how do does it like a bribe, essentially? Yeah, I mean it's a it's is a that, private transaction. Yeah, it, that's so. There's two big ways. There's two big ways. The first is speaking fees, right? Oh. Like Goldman Sachs will say, "Oh, right, you know, we want this big important person to come speak at our company." Wink, wink. Um, and and so they'll invite somebody to speak and pay them like millions of dollars to speak. And then the other way is just basically like a job offer that says, all right, if you ever lose your election because of all the corrupt things that you've done, don't worry. We've got a we've got a parachute package for you, and we're going to give you millions of dollars to come just be a consultant for our company, whatever. And they just let them loaf around um, doing nothing, and they just pay them millions of dollars. They're because... essentially a mascot for the company. Yeah, exactly. They're that's actually the perfect way of saying it. They're literally just a mascot. Um, so that's what they do, and that's why like people like Pete Buttigieg, for example, like that's his whole career, right? Mm -hmm. Like he was a consultant for like McKinsey, which is this just absolutely horrible company that has done some of the worst consulting work out there in terms of like like literally like consulting companies on how to be more evil and like try to get away with it. Um, and and then he goes to be the mayor and then when you know he sort of fails at his presidential run oh he gets hired right away you know by what was it like cnn or something like that talk about talk about failing up in the most extravagant yeah. way he is he's, he is a fail son um 
people, I, I every time I saw Pete Buttigieg's face during the primary, I just I couldn't get over like his ears always look pointy. He looks like a gremlin. Like he's a rat. He's a little rat. <laughs> yeah, he is a rat boy. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. It, it sounds like we. It sounds like we should have some sort of uh, uh, law in pr- in place that you you can't accept these like essentially bribes from like while you're in a position of power like it doesn't seem right there are supposed to be laws but a lot of politicians violate those laws regardless and yeah. they don't get in trouble so you know there there are there are there are systems in place to to make sure that doesn't happen they're just not enforced that's the only issue they're just not enforced yeah, I mean, and not to mention the fact that they literally stuff the courts with the uh, with like just absolute hacks. So when you have a bunch of judges that are literal just hacks, and they're like, "Oh, what corruption? I don't see any corruption." That's right. Because yeah. what people forget he put is, like, like the judicial branch is just as corrupt. You know? Oh yeah. Oh my god. Trump put like uh, what two hundred something judges to work in his term or some shit. He appointed them. Mm-hmm. And we all like and the. Uh, literally, literally stuff, literally stuff the court, yeah. but then turns around and goes, uh, "Those Democrats are going to stuff the court with with the political, you know, political judges." Right. Bullshit. Yeah. Are aren't yeah. aren't judges political anyway? Or, yeah, in America they are, but they shouldn't be. They 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 should there should be a way to to decouple who puts judges in power. I feel like we should be the ones voting on that. Mm-hmm. But then that's a lot of judges. That's a lot of judges as well. Yeah. So I, I don't know how you would do that in, in, a, in, a, in a democratic process. Mm. Yeah, well, there are a lot of places, actually. So here, to anybody watching, there are a lot of places that have elected judges. And almost every single time, they're unopposed. Every single time, right? And there are actually some states that have no requirement, no exp- experience or legal degree or anything requirements for, to run to be a judge that's scary right? oh my what? god where wow. like in georgia like <laughs> of course it's very, how american how american so if you're watching this run to be a judge you're gonna be running against somebody unopposed, okay? i mean you're, what level on the ballot are, are what level shot. of the courts are we talking like are we talking like all levels or are, are we talking like local or like it's like yeah. Um, so at that level, at that level, it's mostly like like county courts, um, like county courts, city courts, um, like things like that. Like so, maybe district courts within your individual state. Federal district court judges um, are appointed by the president. Right. Um, but like those local judges make a really big difference. Those yeah. No, make they a do. Really, really big difference. I you know? I just voted. Uh, we just had a, a issue with ours, and uh, someone got. At, someone had to abdicate their throne essentially because they they did bad stuff and this recent go around we just had to vote for our our district or whatever judge and I, I remember looking into all of these people and being like they're all awful they're all like people that believe that drugs are bad and people should be locked away forever and like all these like really hard like right-leaning like ideas and I'm like how how do I vote for any of these people when I know that if I get in trouble, they're going to fuck me <laughs> like and, and in a way that's just not OK. Like, I don't consent. Yeah. Um. <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, and that's the thing. Like, if you're like if you run to be a local judge, if you run to be a local judge, I mean, the impact you could have on people's lives. I mean, you could just refuse to prosecute or you could you could re- not not prosecute because that's those are. Those are district attorneys, which also a lot of them are elected. And in some states, once again, no requirements on background or experience or whatever. Which is awful. Um, but, uh, but if you're a judge, you could just be like, no, I'm not going to find anybody guilty if they're, you know, like if, if they're a nonviolent drug offender, whatever. Mm-hmm. You can shrug mm-hmm. it off, right? If you find that your local DA is prosecuting, like, sex workers, right, you could just be like, no, I don't really want to, like, let's focus on, like, actual things. Right. Because what happens is sometimes like corruption charges, right, sometimes bribery charges and fraud charges will come in front of them. And judges, most of the time, they're like, oh, well, you just committed a rich person crime. So we're going to go light on you. Maybe you go the other way. Maybe you're like, no, this person's committing fraud. What do you what do you you're committing fraud against people living in retirement homes? Are you kidding me? That's so, no, you're going to we're going to throw the book at you. Right. Like you could do that as a judge. You could have a huge impact on people's lives. Um and so, 
run against these unelected judges, okay? If you if go to your go to your ballot on November, like that you just filled out in November, look for all the positions that are un um, or that are that are like unopposed, right? That are unopposed, okay? And just put your name on the ballot. Just just register and put your name on the ballot. You don't even have to campaign for yourself because if they're running unopposed and nobody's paying attention to the race and you just put one other name in there, right? Then and if nobody's paying attention, it's going to be a 50-50 shot. It's going to be a 50-50 shot whether or not you get that seat. So what, right? so what Ben is telling you is to actually pay attention and don't vote willy-nilly, please. Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Um, eh. Oh, man. That, it's so scary. Um, it is, because, like, I... I don't know about you guys, but I've been in trouble plenty, and I don't like. I it is now increasingly more scary to know that you, some places you don't have to have the qualifications to enforce the law. That's like that's the equivalent of essentially a cop, because a cop yes. doesn't need education; it just needs a badge and a gun and per, like four weeks of fucking physical training, which is again something I'm totally against. I think all officers should have at least the minimum of a bachelor's degree. Uh like like a state trooper. Because a state trooper needs an education. A cop doesn't. Mm-hmm. Um so Oh yeah yeah. I mean we I like yeah. that. But, yeah, exactly. No, they, they definitely, uh, they make sense. And it's not like it's so far off from what we're talking about anyway. Um, especially like when we talk about uh, uh, electoral politics is where it, there's people in power or planning to be in power that do plan on doing something in, in regards to student le- debt forgiveness. From what I'm reading uh, and what I understand, um, though, it's mostly in the term of... Uh, Comrade uh, Bubbles, Clouded Mind, Pasta La Pizza, thank but, you uh, all the for the follows. Is that they're going to tax thank everyone you. and make, uh, educate, potentially pay for education that way. What do you guys, do you guys think that would be a good idea? Like, do you think it would be great if we, if, if we were taxed and we had free education and no yes. one had to worry about student debt? Yes. It's so funny that you say that because, uh, like, that's, that's an argument, like, so in terms of free education, people say if we have if we all had free education, it will devalue education and make what and make the degree worthless. Yeah, I've heard that argument that if we have free education, what? But it's yes, <laughs> but currently under the system we have now, the degree is is worthless anyway. So yeah. yes, I, I, people, I would. Yeah, the only people who could say that are boomers, right? Who are there yeah. like, yeah, when I went to, you could go to college and then you could buy a house for $600 right out of school or some shit like that. I know not $600, but that's basically yeah. it, right? right. Like, yeah. yeah, so so they're all boomers, right? They don't live in reality. They live 50 years ago and think that like um, nothing has changed. They're like rent for an apartment. What could that cost? $300, right? Yeah. Right. Like yeah. They, they're, they're so disconnected, right? Yeah. They, they, no understanding at all i have to have frequent talks with my father-in-law uh though because even though he was part of you know the sexual revolution and the tune in drop out of timothy leary and all the other shit you know he also has a, a very uh kind of boomer mindset when it comes to politics and he's one of those people that votes against his own interests uh because for some reason like He's one of those people that be like, well, someday I could have, you know, the means and opportunities that these people have. And I don't want to be, you know, taxed to hell or whatnot. Oh, you mean like a capitalist ally? Yeah. A capitalist wannabe? Yeah. yeah. And those I, people, those boomers are so lost to me. They, 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 they think that one day, no matter how old they are, that they're going to be like the nef- next Jeff Bezos. Mm-hmm. And yeah, exactly. They're like fifty years. They're like fifty years old, and they're like, "I'm gonna have this brilliant genius business idea and become it's the so next Jeff Bezos." It's and it's so like Jeff sad. Bezos is younger than you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez! Like, I capitalist allies are just blow me away because they're just like, they will, they will literally make make me poorer, Daddy. Step on me because one day I'll I'll sit beside you on your big gigantic yacht. That's no, right. you won't. No, you won't. No, you won't. That's got to be like a, f- a subsection of fin doming. Um. <laughs> 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 um, 
Uh, yeah. So, I feel like it, like that's. I think that's a good idea. You, you pay a little more also, taxes, you get a good education, and then holy shit, we have more teachers. Holy shit, thing, we the, have more but nurses. But the thing in America, the thing in America is you don't even need to pay more taxes. What you need to do is take money out of the military. There is no. enough money for all of these things. Just literally take money, even 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 local, even like state budgets for for the police. Yes, take a little bit of that. Militarize your goddamn police. Oh my god. Um, I there was a, there was so much money for libraries and education. Like, and, and public spaces and parks and recreation, but they spend it all on the military and the police. It's insane. Yeah. Um, if even if like yeah, okay. So maybe I'm I'm still for taxing the rich. Like I want that fucking AOC sweater. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I I feel like in in combination in like in in, in a very big nice cr- concert and a crescendo of taxing the rich and then demilitarizing the police and defunding the military like it's like it's like the super friends and it's like whoop and it's like what does it come in the center free education like yeah. probably a, a bunch of other things too like fucking health care and oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> that could be added into it too literally like it, 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 like cut it cut the military budget in half not only would it still be the most expensive military budget in the world. Well, you thank you, Tina, for letting me figure out uh, by saying hello, uh, and, dirt. And, and educate them. Yeah, Dirty I mean, king. It's pretty much it with everybody on the planet, <laughs> to be entirely honest. Like, it's not that expensive. Ending world hunger would only cost, like, I, I think the last number I saw for this was, like, like half a trillion dollars. Half a trillion dollars, mm-hmm. and we could, like, end world hunger. Which means, like, if Jeff Bezos wanted to tomorrow, he could just spend, like, 1% of all of his money and just, boom, no more world well, hunger. Well, listen, listen, yeah. Ben. Okay, the, it, hunger incentivizes you to work. Sweaty, think again. <laughs> <laughs> Without student loans, no one's going to take shitty jobs that they exactly. need. Exactly. <laughs> think about it. <laughs> Who will work in fucking McDonald's now? Yeah, who's gonna who's gonna serve you your your drinks, huh? Who? <laughs> yeah, you know what's funny? This is this is something I say like all the time. So once upon a time, I was a janitor at a grocery store, right? I was a, and I was that was like a chill job. If I could have made right, I mean, think about this, right? Let's live in an alternate dimension, right? Where I'm living there in the ultimate dimension and i'm still i'm still working that job except for i'm making a living wage i'm making a living wage right and i get mm-hmm. vacation time and shit like that i probably wouldn't be here right so like these capitalists through their own greed literally create like this they're like they literally create the army of the poor that's like raging against them right trying to trying to like make a better world for themselves because they just couldn't chill. Like they just couldn't chill. They couldn't be like, you know what? We make enough money. Okay. Oh, let's shit. pay people decent wages. Let's mm-hmm. just, you know, you um, let, let's just be happy with what we have. And they're like, no, we have to make sure that these people are making twenty thousand dollars a year and that they have all this debt over their heads and things like that. And they I just, they just can't deal with. They can't deal with maybe just letting people have a decent life. And so they, they create really their own opposition. Mm-hmm. Um, Agreed. Because I was chill doing that job. I would have been fine doing that if I was making sixty k a year. I probably wouldn't be here today. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It 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 would be nice um, if we did get this uh, student loan debt forgiveness on the go. And, oh, like, okay. Yeah. I, I had a question. What what is Joe Biden's? fucking plan because i don't feel like oh, i feel like he, he goes all over the place with this shit i don't even know what it is anymore um uh what is his plan like what i thought last time i heard it was like he would take like 10 grand off of people's student loans which i mean That's... something's better than nothing but uh so do, do you mind if i get really doomer yes do it. Ready? Go you know, so, for it. <laughs> you, know, you know how I mentioned earlier that the executive branch has all the authority in the world to just negotiate down these uh, loans to zero? Yes. Well, Joe Biden wants uh, to ask Congress to approve a $10,000 debt forgiveness. 
So basically, while he says he wants to do debt forgiveness, right, by saying, I want a Congress to pass a law to do this thing that I already have the authority to do, right? He's literally just saying, I'm not going to do this. And I know Congress is not going to pass this. Mm -hmm. And so fuck you guys, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to say that I support it while doing literally everything in my power to not only, right, not do it, but also make it impossible for any future president to even possibly do this. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's possible that he thinks that using things like executive power is an abuse of power? Oh, God, no. Oh, okay. God, no. This is Joe Biden. Like, like I know, I know like, it's Joe Biden. I'm just like, trying to be, I'm trying to give my, my, my grandpa the benefit of the doubt. My future grandpa, like, I want, <laughs> I want to have some faith as much as being a doomer is like na natural at this point. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I mean, because he doesn't have any opposition to executive power, right? He's used it like, like, so under the, like, Obama administration, right which which like uh, you know I, I get it joe biden was not obama but also like they use an unbelievable amount of like executive power to literally um i mean they they were prosecuting journalists right under the espionage act right yeah so they're they're, they're not gonna they, they're not gonna shy away from executive orders when it comes to helping out like giant corporations right mm -hmm. that's well we all know that like uh joe biden's and bed with like capital one but um and any other credit card company in delaware but um like so do you think there's a chance like i want to i want to believe that there's a chance that congress can pass something like that but the moment it hits the senate it's fucked because i don't know about you but i'm not relying on georgia to make it so we have more fucking democratic senators um there's, I just, I don't have that kind of faith in Georgia. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, if the Democrats really wanted to, like, if the Democrats had any interest in winning, uh, what they would do is they would legalize marijuana day one, and they would pass, like, really extreme voting rights laws. Um, and it, so <clears> if you get rid of suppression and you actually do something popular like legalizing marijuana um there you go right that's it that's literally all it would take to make the republican party irrelevant did you see that symbolic vote about making marijuana no longer federally illegal that passed through the congress but it's not gonna go yeah. anywhere yeah um i mean that's that's a cool sim symbol of the progression possible but um we all know that unless the senate is you know, not even Democrat, just more progressive. Uh, yes. It, it's not going to go anywhere. Which, uh, in two years, midterms, 34 seats in the Senate will be up. Go vote! <laughs> yeah, I mean, or run, right? Like, or or run. run. I mean, and, and you can run at, like, a local level, too, and make a pretty significant impact. Look on, at like, AOC, like, dude. People in your, you know, neighborhood. Yeah. Um... You know, I mean, because because here's the thing, like if you run for a state legislative seat, right, state legislatures can make a pretty big impact on mm -hmm. tuition on your state uh, universities and community colleges. Um, and so that's that's, I guess, a really important thing to take into consideration. Yeah. Uh, New York passed and like, I think I think it was like 2018. They made all like literally after I stopped going to school, they make all community colleges tuition free for residents. <laughs> up to uh four years so you can get a, a a nice degree at a suny school up here for free if you're a resident they, they don't pay for books or like room and board but your tuition is covered which i mean tuition is only like i think two or three thousand depending on where you go but still um that's that's a huge step uh because uh there's like like even that small step creates enough space for mm, more people to be able to access education um, and not make it seem so far-fetched to be like, oh, I'm just going to go get my two-year degree, so I have to work part-time to afford my, my books, and I, I, I live at home. It's, 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 I think that's a good sign of progress. By the way, that's another thing that's, that's, that's insane, the, uh, the price of, of textbooks in school. Oh, oh my God. $300 yeah. for a psych book. Ugh. 
Yeah. It's like, but it's the same. It's the same book from last year. They just yeah. republished it. Right. Mm-hmm. Or uh, when I I was in, I went to, I was taking psychology classes for a while, and I had the DSM fucking four or five and then like the new one came out while i was in school and then they were like you have to buy the new one you can't use the old one i'm like but do you know how much that thing costs yeah (laughs) yeah oh even used it's like two hundred dollars why am i paying two hundred dollars for paper the, the worst is 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 seeing those like unbinded textbooks that that some students get it's like it's like just like it's like to like three hundred dollars for like like a hundred pieces of paper it's oh. like that's the worst just just supply everyone with a goddamn kindle and let them download all their shit seriously yeah. though seriously i still like a physical book because for me I, I learn better that way but i see what you're saying oh i mean i i get you Personal reading, I like physical books. I could never do it on a Kindle, but for school, I, yeah. I would make it work. <laughs> like, yeah. So actually, I want to address something, right? Because I have somebody in my chat who's like, "It's not paper; it's knowledge." You're paying for all the work that like people are putting into the textbooks. Okay, the people who are hired to put together these textbooks are a incredibly underpaid, and b and b typically the least experts in their fields, right? So if you think about it, same sort of sort of galaxy brain expert that spends all my time researching something, right? At like a top tier, right? Like research university. And somebody gives me a phone call and says, hey, hey guy, I hear you're a real galaxy brain. You're doing all this research. Do you mind maybe writing this textbook for us or part of it? Um, you're gonna be like, hell no, I have way more important things to do with my life. Don't you understand I'm doing this top tier research right here? And so what they do is they'll find somebody that's been doing work at like a community college or something, not to say that they're not like a galaxy brain or anything like that, but also, right, they pay people as cheaply as they can to write chunks of these of these textbooks, right? And typically, they're not the world's greatest expert in the field. They're like somebody who's knowledgeable enough on the field, um, but who they can quote, greatly underpay for the work that they're doing. So it's not like that knowledge that like they put so much work into the textbook. That's not a thing, right? All of that money is just going to the textbook companies. Okay? Also, it's not, you know, yeah. yeah. Also, sorry if I if I interrupted you. I want to add on the fact that also um, these people. Uh, so you want you want education and knowledge to, to to be a lot of money. So you're gatekeeping. You you want you want there to be a, a, an expensive gatekeeping fee to knowledge. That's that's very uh, classist of you, man. That's yeah, like. 100%. Uh, like why would you? Why would you look down on the people that essentially make your life work? Like knowledge should be shared, not expensive. Yeah. That that's like that's surf. That's surf. Yes, oh my god! Yes. Oh my god! You're too poor. <laughs> you're not allowed to learn. Oh my god! Oh. And, and and also like they they release the same they, they release the same edition of a book. They just require you to, to purchase uh, uh purchase it again every single year to extract money from you. It's not because there's new information. It's most of the time there is there. It's the same information. They're just trying to get more money out of you. That's it. It's not. It's not anything new. So it's not getting. You're not paying for knowledge. You've already paid for knowledge. They're just, you know, paid for knowledge. And they're and just trying to get more money from you. That's it. And then when you sell the book, if it's still it's relevant, like five bucks. yeah, it's like a GameStop exchange. Yeah. Like, ah, <laughs> uh, like that was something I never did. I I gave away my books for free if they were still relevant. Like I could not charge someone. Mm-hmm. For my book i'm like dude i just take it i'm never gonna use it again the only book i still have left from college is like i took a bullshit like weather and meteorology class <laughs> so uh-huh. i'm like a climate book somewhere that's, that's actually really cute <laughs> i could tell you about clouds <laughs> was that was that like a fun was that like a fun class to go to oh dude my teacher was a stoner uh so <laughs> So like he would you he would you could tell he came into class like half baked and like he was always like wearing some form of tie dye like whether it was his tie or his button up or like a shirt underneath his button up 
Like, and we, he would just talk about like, you know, definitely stress that weather and climate are different. And, uh, he was seriously about like encouraging everyone to use like reusable things. And if someone came in this class with a plastic bottle, he would be like, you need to reuse that, man. Don't put that in the trash. He's like, you can, you can yeah. use that. Are you not going to use that? I'll take that home and use that. Like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so like practice yeah so it was a lot of fun um i don't think i gained a whole lot from it but <laughs> it was a lot of fun yeah. easy a <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i don't know give away your books to poor college students don't make them pay true praxis or or you can do what i did and you can go to online online college where they're like shit we don't have any textbooks they're all online they're all pdfs yeah. and they're here's a here's an online virtual library where we just literally have all oh, of them. i did yes. that for the last <laughs> year of my 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 fucking college i did online stuff it was like very difficult to be honest because it wasn't a user-friendly platform uh that's something my state lacks that we f for some reason fight with all our might is uh the advancement of online learning. Uh, for some reason, New York State finds it to be a subpar and inadequate way to learn and won't invest any time or money into making those systems better. And now that we're in a pandemic and we have to do online learning, my son's like, why do I have to open Google Classroom and this one and that one and this page and that page? Why can't we have a central, like, like essentially he's like, why can't we have a place where we do everything at the one spot? Like he wants a centralized mm -hmm. learning system like they have in fucking school. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it was clunky online learning in, uh, in New York. I, I don't recommend it if you live in my state. It's, not it's also good. just like 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 post secondary. It just feels so dated now, considering you can get all your or most of your information online. You know, there are things no. that I think you should go to school for, like obviously being a doctor. You should that that. There's no question yeah. about it. I'm not I'm not really down with the education YouTube thing. Like, uh... well, no, I'm not saying YouTube. <laughs> I'm saying you can. I can literally buy a textbook. Oh right. A textbook that, I can buy a textbook or, or I can look online for uh, like journals now. All this is way more accessible than it used to be. Yeah, or like Coursera, right? Or Coursera. There's literal university professors like from like schools all over the country that have literally put their classes just straight up online. Yeah. Right? yeah. Or uh, so like, let's, uh, say, let's share. say I wanted to be, let's say I wanted to be an archaeologist. I shouldn't have to go to school for this. I, I, I should be, e be able to get all this, all this information is currently online. I shouldn't have to pay all these fees to to just get a piece of paper that's all it is at this point i feel like archaeology yeah. has a hands-on learning experience well oh, that's why that's why you can also do uh you can you, you can get that stuff outside of school you can get that hands off hands-on stuff outside of school for sure there's 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 like three week um uh training courses that you i can sign up to right now oh. without having to sign up to school hmm. yeah 100 percent. i mean like there's there's a okay and i'm honestly i'm gonna democrats are almost worse in this regard because they're like they have like credential fetishes that's what it is it's a credential fetish right where they they want they want certifications for everything and they want like yes. you, know, you know you gotta get all these fancy pieces of paper that says that you know things um and it kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier, where college is just like a class test to make sure, mm -hmm. like, are you in the right class to be in this job, right? We don't need poor people accidentally making their way up in the world. Um, and that's what those those credentials are, where you literally, like, there are some certifications out there, right? So I spent some time working in cybersecurity. So I have, like, a cert Security Plus certification. You have to pay, like, $100 every single year to keep that up, right? You have to, like, pay money to keep up these certifications. And it's just yes. a test to make sure, like, we got to make sure you have extra money lying around uh, if you want to get these types of jobs. Um, mm -hmm. And because it used to be, if you roll back the clock 60 years, it could be like, yeah, like like some of the most world famous like anthropologists who've done like groundbreaking work that sort of developed the field like like 60 years ago. They were just people who showed up. Right. Like there's maybe one person who went to university. Right. And then there's a bunch yes. of other people who are like, I want to be an anthropologist. And they're like, cool, you can we're going to you're going to be on my team and we're going to work together to do this anthropology stuff. Yes. And 
they just learned while they were doing it. It's so weird, right? They didn't need a magic piece and of then, And that's so, that's so frustrating to me. Like, looking back on how people just... You merely had to show interest in something. And then they would be like, oh, yeah, come on. Come work with us. And now you have to not only have not, not only have previous, previous experience, but pay all this money for all this education. It, it, it's so... It's so terrible yeah there and plus there are colleges that do this thing uh i had a friend that did computer science in one of the universities around here and they they're like it's almost like an elitist society that runs it because they were like we're gonna make this class as hard as possible and throw you things that are impossible to solve code wise just to see if you break and drop out of the of computer mm -hmm. science because we want only the best of the best to graduate from this section and it's like how fucked up is that where you take students and you break them so they don't want to be a computer science major anymore? Like, yeah. 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 Why the fuck would you do that? And then they end up working for EA games doing shitty work anyway. Right. You yeah. Know? Like, why would you do that to someone? That Like, how elitist is that? Like, it's just fucked up. Oh. Yeah. Like, I have so many feelings about post-secondary education. I've talked about this on my stream so many times. Just how, just like, how even the fact that if you fail an exam, you should be able to take it as many times as you want until you, until you finally get the hang of it. You shouldn't have to be punished. School should not be about punishment. School should, should be about education and learning. And right now, it's focused on, oh, you don't understand this? Okay, you're going to have to retake it next year. It's all no, about... that's insane. Because it's all about numbers and uh, it's, it's like a competition. If you don't make the school look good then you're not worth giving a chance to. And I think that everyone learns at a different pace, and you are mm -hmm. absolutely right. Someone, If someone doesn't understand something, they should be afforded the opportunity to get it right before they're told that they're, they're a failure, at least. And No, but, 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 like, the only time that, like, someone should, the only time that that should stop is if they're no longer interested. No one should be told that they're a failure in something. You should be able to retake an exam or, 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 or a project as many times as possible until you get it right. If you are showing interest in something, if you are showing passions in something, you should not be punished right. for not understanding that thing. Is it, do you think, all right, so I, I, this is going to be something a little, I don't know, not exactly topic, but do you, do you think that there is like a personal potential limit where there, like, even if you want to know something and you're incredibly interested and passionate about it, you will reach a limit of your own personal potential where you just can't get beyond understand, like some, a certain understanding and you're not going to be able to understand everything about what it is you need but to know. But that's up to you. If you've, if you've come to that conclusion, then yeah, if you've come to the conclusion and said, well, maybe this isn't for me, no one else can make that conclusion you, for you except yourself. You don't. A school, a, a school cannot make that conclusion for you a teacher cannot make that conclusion for you i don't know you have to make that sometimes people have blinders on to even those things and they make it much harder on themselves because they end up trying to fight to be something that they they just can't quite grasp um and i don't know that yeah. is completely off topic and this is philosophy like philosophy now but um uh, but who, like, who decides that? Like, like who who decides that? Who decides that they don't have the potential to do this? And like, you know? uh, and another thing is, I don't, I don't know. Uh, even though I, I understand that, and that's a, it's great. Uh, I don't know if it's practical for a college, because, uh, you know, like some local community college and state colleges, some of their funding comes from things like testing and comes from things like even attendance. And under this current system, correct. So, yes, under this current yeah. system. So I don't, I don't I, know. One thing I want to point out is that this is really new, right? These problems are actually very, very new to universities. So universities have a long and sort of awesome history, if you think about it. And if you, if you like, do like the, a study of like the like uh, history of universities, you'll find that universities in the 90s were literally the last remnant of the pre-industrial era norm of trade guilds right so like let's go if we go all the way back to feudal europe right there were sort of two pathways out of being a feudal serf right you could you could go be part of a trade guild um or like be like a monk right those are kind of like the two options and one of the trade guilds were like was being a university like university they were a trade guild that produced knowledge right and so even if you were never going to be a galaxy brain you could always be part of it um, and, and, and play a role in like, you know, even if you're not the smartest person and you're going to have a difficult time, 
um, you can still like help professors do all of this knowledge stuff. And so they were an institution that was really there to, to basically be like a factory of knowledge um, that was sort of owned and operated predominantly by the professors, right? And and so it kind of operated more like um, somewhere in between like, uh, like I, I guess like a temple where you have monks running it and, uh, and a trade guild where you have like blacksmiths working together. Um, and that kind of existed up until like the 90s. Only after like the 90s when the neoliberals sort of came along and decided that they were going to make these these institutions more efficient by injecting bureaucracy and all these administrators and all these things and they're trying to make it they wanted to make it more profitable and efficient you know to run these universities that's when like like these these tests started to get like injecting themselves in the way that they are um that's when i mean because the whole idea of a standardized test if you talk to any professor they'll kind of laugh it out of the door and so that's yes. ridiculous like yes. what does a standardized test teach you i want somebody to write a paper that displays their knowledge right i want them to it, apply it's you know their knowledge to research issue. things yeah um and so this is all new this is these are all new problems and what, what we're talking about here is like hey let's just rewind the clock on universities like literally 30 years um, to when they were literally like just this institution of learning that was like allowed to be separate from like the capitalist economy that exists outside elsewhere. Um, and I, I guess there's just all this brainwashing that has been done where, where people are sort of forced to forget what institutions used to be even just a couple of years ago um, that, that existed to like protect working class people or at least give people pathways, you know, outside of capitalism um you know it's it, it's just kind of i guess really frustrating to see that that entire history largely forgotten um mm -hmm. in, in the public mind um because I, I think it makes a really big difference in people's lives you know yes yes um i i definitely don't like the system we have where even like public schools uh are uh, defunded because of low test scores because that's how we measure what how people are learning is how they test which is awful no one not everyone's good at testing and it definitely doesn't show you how well a student body is doing because yeah okay you, you got good test scores across the board in your ninth grade fucking whatever uh you know class of whatever but um does that really tell you like the students well-being how they're feeling about their education what they're really retaining after that said test you know mm -hmm. uh it it's not a good system it's also it's also extremely stressful like, test testing is extremely stressful and that's something that we also don't put into consideration school shouldn't be should shouldn't torture the student but it does in this current system testing and, and, and timelines are torturing students and that is terrible you should not be stressed out to learn it should be fun and engaging yeah, yeah. And it should be it should be a fun path of exploration, right? Like, yes. like you know, if you're if for example getting a degree in anthropology, and like like what should happen, right? If, if you showed up at a university, right, like two hundred years ago, right? Let's say you show up at a university two hundred years ago, and it's like like the traditional university that is a trade guild of learning, and you say, I would like to study anthropology. Then there would be like a whole cadre of professors that show up. That would be the anthropology department. They would be like, great, all right what do you want to study right like what culture is interesting to you that you want to study we have all these places that we need to explore and and learn about and then you could say oh i want to work on this area and they're like great then you're going to work under this professor who's focused on that area and you know your your whole educational experience basically turns into a conversation between you and your professor about the research that you're doing and you sort of have a helping hand there to like guide you in that like exploration process while you develop knowledge. Um, and now it's just like you show up to an ad, like and you have an adjunct who is like, yeah, I work at McDonald's part time because literally this doesn't pay the bills. And uh, so I have a curriculum I put together and everybody you're going to write this one paper uh, that everybody has written for the past five years because if I work at McDonald's, I don't have the time to develop a new curriculum every single year. And uh, then you're going to take these three standardized tests. And happy birthday. I hope you take something away from it. Uh, by the way, I'm not going to have any open office hours. Because once again, I also work at McDonald's and cannot afford to survive. Um, so I'll be like your college, right? Like mm -hmm. that's, you know.
Jeez. <laughs> like, uh, the, and just the shift in that has, has just been so dramatic that, uh, you know, like people just had all this opportunity for like creative learning just sort of stripped away from them, you know? Yeah. For sure. Absolutely. Imagine if we were incentivized to actually enjoy going to yes. school and enjoy Listen, the thing, learning. The thing about the thing about the thing about this 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 stressful situation that that we we put on ourselves. It's quite modern as well. Like Ben was saying, it's it's quite a modern modern thing. Uh, you know, like yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Very modern. We didn't used to. We didn't used to. We didn't used to put this this kind of stress on our students like this. Yeah. Um. So, I had to be a student teacher for a year before I got my degree, and they instead of putting me in a, like a kindergarten class, which is my comfort zone, you know, they they put me in a like fifth grade class where we do standardized testing for uh, ELA and math in that year, and um. The thing is, is like most we're as a teacher, apparently by like some New York law or code, we're not allowed to tell parents that they can have their child opt out of standardized testing. We're not allowed to say that they have to come to us and ask us if they have to take the test first before we tell them, oh, no, you, as long mm -hmm. as you like submit a, a letter or an email to us that saying you want him to opt out. I can, you know, then, then, then I can, but I can't tell them directly. Um, and having, you know, special education students uh, integrated now with uh, the general population of the, the class. So it like normalizes those things. You see who struggles with those tests inside that classroom. And mm -hmm. like, I felt awful having to sit there and like, tell a student that I can't help them with this thing because it's it, it's like literally against the rules and if I am caught helping you in any sort of way other than uh, telling you the directions again like it, it, it's a big deal like I could lose my job you'll probably have to take the test again like uh they like they can they'll they've uh like suspended and expelled students for you know getting it for getting help from teachers during standardized testing just, like that. just this, 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 this whole idea of punishment in education needs to end and dr heem doubt listen man the whole thing we're talking about it's dismantling the system of suffering yeah yeah i guess if you want to continue living in a system of suffering we can do that but we're talking about a system where we want to just not only dismantle suffering but have fun injected into our society and into our lives that's what we're saying heem Yeah, I mean, well, because capitalism doesn't put any value on joy, right? Yeah. Like, like, because they, 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 see, they're like joy, joy. Excuse me, having fun doing <laughs> things. Excuse and also, me. and also to add on what you were saying earlier, like capitalism also doesn't really um, value personal relationships, like, like you know, like being a parent. I'm gonna throw back to what you said earlier. Being a parent, you don't get paid for for, for taking care of children. You know, that's valueless in the current system. And children cost around 10 to 15K a year. Uh, you know? Yeah. You're yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, that, like, just the whole system sucks ass. And it's still, it's also quite modern. We all actually, like, we all used to live with, live with each other in, 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 like, villages and help each other. But now, it's, help, don't even think about helping anyone else. Just pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Well, uh, well, you know, you know, let, let, let your, let your neighbor suffer, okay? It's, it's, it's a toxic, tragic system. Yeah. Yeah. To the point where I have somebody in my chat who's literally like, oh, tests make you study. Tests make you study. No, they That's don't. That's so weird. Okay. You know what's funny me? about that? We all currently, like me, uh, like all of us lefties, we do studying, but we don't. We're not incentivized by testing, but we love reading. We love learning. You don't need to be. You don't need to be tested on this. It's a bit of dumb take. Yeah, I know, right? Like literally, like I mean, everybody who's watching this channel right here, it came here because they're interested in hearing a discussion about like debt forgiveness and we've kind of gone all over the board um yes. but like that's it like people are interested in a topic and they wanted to learn more about it right so they came here 
to, to hear us do this panel discussion it, about it. Are we gonna have a test at the end of this? Are we gonna have a test? <laughs> and it's really funny. It's really funny that the person says that because I literally own textbooks and I like. I actually love reading textbooks. It's super nerdy of me. But guess what? I don't have. A, I don't have a test at the end of this. To, to help incentivize me read those textbooks. I read them because I'm interested in the topic, okay? The the test for us is when someone comes in our chat and starts debating us. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good point. Good point. Um, but yeah. Um, I don't... Testing does not make you study. I didn't fucking study for half the tests I took in my life. Like... Yeah. Yeah. If anything, oh, tests tell yeah. you what you don't have to study, right? Like tests are like, okay, you can, you only need to focus on these parts and you can ignore everything else, right? That's what a test does, yeah. right? Instead of being driven by curiosity, which is boundless, you are now instead confined to the specific topics that are going to be covered in a test. And it's so fascinating because we're all so like adjusted to suffering that like, <laughs> you know, we're like, oh, you know, you can't heal, like humans can't be able to do won't be able to do anything they won't be incentivized to do anything without you know suffering really that's such a bullshit take that's such a bullshit fucking take just get that out of your mind humans have been incentivized by things beforehand before all this capitalist this all this all this capitalist system we we're incentivized by other things like like curiosity or or or, or passion or even our even the, even our loved one yeah I mean, capitalism wants to pretend that we're all like these mindless, selfish robots, right? To the point where mm -hmm. there's people who are so doomer, who are like, people will literally do nothing unless you hold something against them. And that's the capitalist yeah. system right there. The hey, hey, system is, ben, you know... capitalist creates innovation. <laughs> capitalism creates innovation, guys. What? No. No. A personal drive is what does it. <laughs> oh my god. Like... I'm I'm I don't I don't know I don't know. There there has to be some psychologist out there that has to be like, no, we aren't programmed to strive because of suffering and uh, Oh I mean just look at all of all of look at like literally like look at all of history. Capitalism is still quite a new uh, you know you yeah. know, system. And all of human history, we were driven by other things. Like the queen. Uh <laughs> <laughs> True feudalism, baby. Oops. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This person in my chat, I love this. They're like, so your theory is that society would function well if people just did what they wanted to. That is what oh my god! For thousands of years. Yeah. Dude. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what is you know what's the purpose of society if not to let people do what they want to do? Are right? they trying to like, argue that like we wouldn't have like the advancements we have today if we didn't suffer? Yes, yes. No, there is still nerds somewhere oh, yeah, in the right, world. Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. Fire was invented by humans for hundreds of thousands of years, whenever, whatever. By capitalism. Good job, man. <laughs> yeah, the, the the person that is it, the next person to invent time travel probably, like, you know, died of hunger over in fucking a third world country because fucking capitalism, right? Mm -hmm. Like, how many geniuses did we lose because of capitalism? Like what? Why? It's, it's yes, yes, yes. One hundred percent. We'd still have computers and all sorts of shit if we, if, 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 if even if we didn't suffer. Like you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and think about this. Like, I remember. Okay, I, I remember this vividly, right? Because this is a whole business model now, right? When I was a kid, when I was like, when I was like fourteen, I was like, you know what? I wish that like you could get delivery from any restaurant you wanted. Like I wish there was a company out there where you could just you could just you could just call and they would have somebody pick up the food for you. So it would just be a delivery business, right? That would pick up food from all these restaurants, right? But I was a poor teenager, right? I was a poor teenager, right? So I innovated that idea in my head like ten years before that exists. Okay. And it's 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 so funny that you say that because you look at all these like Elon Musks and all that shit. They have this childlike wonder to them that we that we that we can afford. So they're able to make all these like 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 what did Elon Musk sell the fire the the fire thing for like like that kind of stuff allows yeah, right, you know their wealth allows them to sell to, to be as childlike and and uh Dude. and fun as possible. But we we are stuck here on the ground. 
Elon Musk is a weird dude. Just, just gonna put it out there. Uh, like, the level of genius he's at must create some weird ass personality. And also, I really, really want to be a fly on the wall when Grimes and him are fucking. Like, my, my oh favorite, my, God, no. my favorite thing, my favorite thing about Elon Musk, and possibly the worst thing he, and stupidest thing he ever did, was when he set the stock prices to test that 420. Do you guys remember that? Like. <laughs> Like, he was just like, oh, well, I'm gonna do this. He was probably really high at the time, but right. oh my god. The rich are able- By the way, the rich are able to do that. They're able to, to, to live in their fucking- uh, One of their three mansions. And just be- Just do dumb shit on the internet every single day. Right. But you have to go to work uh, and get paid minimum wage. Yeah, yeah, literally. And all your galaxy brain ideas- I want anybody who's listening in chat who's like, I'm gonna have a galaxy brain idea to be like a millionaire. Well, guess what? You probably are going to have a galaxy brain idea. That could make somebody millions of dollars, but you don't have fucking money right now. And if you don't have millions of dollars from your parents to invest in a company that delivers food to random people, right? Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. And you know who is going to invent it? Some piece of shit who wants to exploit workers instead of somebody who wants to actually provide a service. They're thinking like, I'm going to extract as much wealth as I can from these people and, and make my employees actually contractors so that I don't have to give them wages or health care. Right. Yeah. Like that's what they do. Right. Yeah. And, and they're going to make it shittier for everybody. They're going to take what could be a good idea that would be fun. And then they turn it into literally the worst version of it possible. Yeah. And to evidence that is Elon Musk saying on Twitter that he wants indentured servitude to fund his Mars mission. Right? <laughs> That's right. Do you remember when he tweeted it? He also tweeted out, uh, we'll coo whoever we want. Yeah, yeah I've seen that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That was my, that was my Twitter, uh, the, the header of my Twitter for like six months. I was like, holy shit. That's that's awesome oh my god um and i mean i i don't like the idea of uh a, a, a planet body being run by another planet outside of their system that has no idea what the fuck's going on they can't directly communicate with each other we should allow the planets to govern themselves like but that will happen because corporate you know money and greed they're gonna fucking own that shit mm-hmm yeah. I mean, well, that's a concern, right? Like, Elon Musk is like, we're not going to follow any Earth laws. But when he says that, he means, because here's the thing. If there's a bunch of, like, random people, right? Like, let's say, let's say, like, left Twitch for whatever reason. We all got together and, like, we're going to go on a Mars mission and we're going to go live on Mars. Thanks. Right? It'd yeah. be dope. It'd be a dope leftist, like, space communism. <laughs> right. right. Luxury, luxury space communism. Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. And, but like if Elon Musk does it, he's like, I don't want to follow labor laws. I don't want to pay workers shit, right? Like that's, you know. If anyone, if anyone has played the Outer Worlds, I think that is the, the most <laughs> accurate rendition of what, what would happen if something like yeah. that were, were to go, th go through. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's oh, yeah. why we should forgive student loans. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's that's why. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I appreciate that. Love it. <laughs> yeah. So we can go live on Mars together. It'll be great. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'm, I'm ready for guy. Mars. <laughs> I I really appreciate y'all showing up today, but I think we're gonna wrap it up there because we're we're going all over the place and, and yeah. it's a great conversation. It's wonderful. I love it. But um, <laughs> whichever way way <laughs> these we panels it's generally really what happens on these panels you just go it way is. out of no, topic we go all over we go all over but yeah mm -hmm. no it was really interesting and and i learned a little bit here so like thank you guys um i really appreciate it uh, a whole mm -hmm. bunch i'll be yeah. looking forward to getting you all together for like another panel sometime i, I gotta, would love I gotta... to do this again yes. yeah it'd be great yes yeah, it's fun yeah, um, I'll try and work on some topics. I got, uh, if anyone has any um, ideas, feel free to shoot them into me uh, at any time. <laughs> um, uh, mm -hmm. But uh, if if you wouldn't mind, we'll go do outros and just kind of like introduce yourself. Well, not really introduce, but like say who you are, what you do. You know, you guys know the drill. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. <laughs> Thanks. Alrighty. Uh, we'll start with Tina. 
Hi, uh, I said it in the beginning, but I'll say it again. I am Twitch, Tina underscore two, Twitch lefty mom. I spank all the bad boys and girls who come to, the, come to my stream. Uh, I cover anything from American politics. I do also cover Canadian politics. Uh, you know, all the, all the indigenous, um, uh, all the indigenous rights that need to be worked on in Canada. All that jazz. So come on, come stop that. Hang out with me a little bit. Yes, you guys should absolutely do that. Um, and Bemi, you next, please. Remy? Oh. Remy? Oh, yeah. Remy, I thought you said, I'm sorry. Oh, I yeah. thought you said I something else. Good there. I was like, did you say Benny? Yeah, that's what I thought. Like... <laughs> okay. Uh, hi, I'm Remy. You can find me on Twitch at Remy Jacks World, Jacks with an X. Um, I. I am streaming a, a lot of World of Warcraft because Shadowlands just dropped. Um, and I also do a podcast with uh, an Australian fellow called r and Podcast where we talk about sex, drugs, and rock and roll uh, <laughs> and whatever the hell mm -hmm. else we want to talk about. Um, and yeah, and I'll... Yeah, I, 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 I like to talk about just about anything. So if you end up popping in my chat... Uh, most things aren't off the table, so whatever. I'm usually just blah, 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 you know, whatever about video games. So, yep, that's me. Awesome. Thank you very much. And last but not least, uh, Benny, I guess, is what we're going to call <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, so I I'm Ben. You can find me at Bleep Blomp Ben. Um, and, uh, yeah, I do news and politics in the morning, 9 o'clock central, literally seven days a week, with few exceptions. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, basically what you see here is kind of what you get in the middle of news content, basically. So, uh, yeah. Guys, definitely go follow Ben. He's a great streamer. Absolutely, yes. Uh, I, I watch all of these streamers. I, I've learned from all of them. You all should absolutely go follow them if you're not already. Really, really appreciate you guys coming out today. And I'll be thinking of topics to get y'all together again next time. I can't wait. I, I can't wait. This was, this was so much fun, Tara. Yeah. I love this. <laughs> all right. Alrighty, guys. Thanks again. Have a good one. See ya. You too. Bye. See you. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Uh, let's see. Get my camera going. There we go. So, ooh, that's bright. Um, I will be back on later this afternoon to play a little World of Warcraft. We did raiding last night, but I didn't get to stream it. We got down two bosses. Uh, we got down the the bat guy, Shriek wing or whatever is pronounce all of us married oh thank you so much uh rain 101 and zach seven fair for the follow and trash tandy for 20 thank you for the follow um <laughs> thank you guys so much for coming by um i i now pronounce all of us married i'll be back later this afternoon tonight for shadowlands and stuff i don't know what i'm gonna be doing probably some mythics but uh yeah uh love you guys see you later hail satan all that good jazz